So, Pascal, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. You're an old friend of the school. That's you have right. spoken here before, uh, and now, of course, you come up with this brilliant uh, Oxford Martin Commission report. Tell us a bit about the report and what do you see as a big message that this report is trying to put across? Well, it was a fantastic group, mm. and you were part of that group, <laughs> sure. so you know that. Uh, but I, I really love working with this group, and I think we've, we've done a relatively good job mm. at looking at challenges of future generations, mm. sort of trying to address long-term issues, mm. which unfortunately mm. have uh, very often disappeared from the radar screen of mm. domestic day-to-day -day politics. Mm. And we did this in a way which was uh, very much sort of science-based in order to see how we could be better at addressing future challenges on environment, on inequalities, on geopolitical tensions. Mm. We looked at what has worked mm. and what has not worked mm. for the two or three last decades, mm. trying to understand why what worked worked mm. and what, what didn't work didn't work. For instance, why did HIV AIDS work reasonably well? Mm what is uh, addressing the uh, ozone layer work reasonably well, why does overfishing mm. or financial regulation before the 08 crisis not work. Mm -hmm. And we draw a number of lessons from that, that has to do with leadership, with institutions, with coalition building. Mm. And building on that, we tried to outline a few proposals mm. that would make these big challenges we have ahead of us easier to deal with rather than more difficult. Yeah. You know, talking of uh, easier to deal with, as you know, the report comes up with some specific recommendations of what can be done. What, what do you see as some of the easier things that can be implemented uh, in, the, in the near future? And what do you see as the more difficult ones? Now, for the moment, uh, commissioners have engaged on the sort of follow-up uh, action and three of the 10, 12 proposals we made are a matter of immediate focus. The first one is this uh, coalition for addressing climate change mm. uh, with uh, 20 countries, 30 big multinationals, 40 cities, cities. Yeah. Uh, and that's maybe starting to take shape. <coughs> We've been contacting the three poles of this coalition, and we are now discussing with them to see how and if they could work together. So this one is getting a bit of traction. So climate change is number one. Climate change is clearly number yeah, one. Yeah. The number two on which we are working is this idea of a sort of big uh, statistical uh, database which would be somewhere in the cloud mm. uh, and which would offer a much wider access to everybody on this planet at this huge pot of data which we all need. Yeah. And the third one uh, which has uh, also got some traction is what we call Fit Cities, mm. uh, which is an alliance by a number of uh, big megapoles. Mm. Uh, the purpose of which would be to address uh, non-communicable diseases mm and notably obesity, which, uh, as we all know, is one of the possible big problems yeah. of health uh, 10 or 20 years from now, yeah. starting with what we know in uh, many countries today. Yeah. And the key thing, of course, uh, in all these things, if you're trying to reach out to people and to change uh, their behavior, is education. And in this regard, you know, I was going to ask you, what, what do you see the role of uh, schools of public policy like the Lee Kuan Yew School, like Sion Spo in Paris. What can our contribution be in terms of helping to implement the recommendations uh, of the Oxford Mining Commission report? I think it's, uh, I mean, I think it's fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, education is about, you know, investing in individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a proverb in France, mm -hmm. which, which is a quote by a famous uh, writer of the end of the Middle Ages, who is called Rabelais. And Rabelais wrote, uh, ignorance is the mother of all vices. Mm -hmm. And I deeply agree with that. Mm 
-hmm. I think that's the real way out. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, education is, whether it's child education, whether you're sort of teenagers, whether it's later at university, that's the way to grow people. Mm -hmm. And you know, the most fantastic resource we have on this planet mm -hmm. is people. Yeah. And I think uh, helping them, mm. featuring what the world of 10, 20, 30 years from yeah. now will be, which is, will be the world they will live in, yeah. which is the world they will, uh, the, that will matter for them, helping them featuring this yeah. and addressing these big challenges mm. is something our generation yeah. really needs to do because we're not sure we're going to leave them uh, with uh, that greater planet. Yeah. I mean, it may be. Yeah. But there are also are risks yeah. which I think we need to address. Yeah. And as you know, in the first part of your report, you show how in many ways uh, poverty has been reduced in Asia, how the Asian economies are growing. And so clearly what the Asian countries do uh, will make a huge difference uh, in the years to come. So if you were to advise a school of public policy like the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy and say, when you talk to policy makers in Asia, uh, what is the message we as a school can help to convey to policymakers in Asia on Asian roles and responsibilities? I mean, first, I think you're right. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, this uh, plus three billion people that will join the middle class by 2030, mm -hmm. two among the three are in Asia. Mm -hmm. so, That's an amazing statistic. That says a lot yeah. on you know, the importance yeah. of Asia. Now, I think the key, and that's what we've found in this report, yeah. the key is uh, to find a proper articulation between economic efficiency, yes. which leads to poverty reduction, yeah. and addressing social concerns about inequalities. Mm. And if you don't do that, the risk is that mm. society will be with tension that hamper the capacity to grow. Mm -hmm. So I think this this is the real this is the real issue. How do you combine in a way a vibrant economy mm. and a cohesive society? Mm. There are reasons for this not to be coincidental. Yeah. It needs proper political governance, institutional, cultural approaches. And you know, I think Asia with a sort of sense of community. Mm -hmm in a way of solidarity, even if uh, growth for the last 10 or 20 years has resulted in bigger inequalities than yeah. in the past, I think addressing this is, th is the key to the future. Yeah. In fact, that's exactly uh, why a school of public policy, we believe, uh, is extremely important because it's becoming clearer now that, you know, as you know, in the reagan Thatcher years, we focus so much on the markets, but now we realize that you need to have a balance between the invisible hand of a free market and the visible hand uh, of good governance, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and so, in a sense, uh, if you were talking to students at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, especially the young ones, and telling them, you're about to enter the Asian policy-making stream, clearly one area of attention is inequality, as you mentioned. The other area, of course, is sustainability also in Asia. And what would your advice be on the sustainability front? No, my advice on the sustainability front is uh, don't rely too much on sovereign states agreeing on common rules, mm. like we had to do it in the past on trade, for instance, uh, which was one of the reasons why trade is open now. Mm. But do things uh, more bottom-up. I mean, try and find the proper coalitions mm. with public entities, mm. including sub-national public entities. Mm. You know, you have a hundred mayors on this planet who have more power than half of the heads of state of government of the United Nations General Assembly. Mm. Uh, and involve business and civil society mm. in these issues. And how to do that, how to create this glue how to create these bridges and linkages is, I think, mm. an art of governance for the future, which schools like yours mm. could help fostering, uh, sort of, you know, giving the yeah. people of tomorrow the necessary talent mm. 
-hmm. If you are on the policy side to understand where is business, if you're in business to understand where is civil society, yeah. and creating this sort of mix which we need. In fact, that, that's been one of our key focus, uh, areas of focus in recent years. Because you know, the, our curriculum rests on economics, politics, and leadership and management, and they're often taught in three different silos. So we decided to integrate all three of them uh, in the classroom. And I think one way of integrating them is to look at real public policy challenges, and then realizing that sometimes the economics answer is easy, but the politics part of it is harder, and sometimes it's 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 absolutely sort of, uh, uh, you know, vice, vice uh, vice uh, vice uh, a famous uh, European politician said, uh, "We know what to do, yeah. but we don't know how to be reelected <laughs> if we do it." <laughs> That's a very great line. Yeah. <laughs> That's a key question, and I think it also it also means that we have to integrate. Yeah. more social sciences than in the past yeah. in high-level uh, public uh, policy uh, education. Uh, things like sociology, like ethnology, like anthropology, like yeah. psychology, yeah. I think matter more than in the past. Yeah. And you've also worked with some, you know, some of the greatest uh, policy makers the world has seen in recent times, like for example Jacques Delors. And you must have learned some lessons from some of these sort of uh, great gurus. If you were to share some of these lessons with uh, students of the Lee Kuan Yew School, what would you say they were? I mean, I would, if I were to do that, yeah. I would take you know, sort of 10 people mm. who the most impressed me mm. for the last uh, 30 or 40 years, mm -hmm. and I would look at them. You know, people like Jacques Delors. I had a dinner last week with uh, Michael Bloomberg. Uh, An astounding, the mayor of the city. Yeah. astounding guy. Yeah. You know, really somebody that has a vision, a knowledge, a drive. Yeah. People like uh, you know, Tsu Wongji at the time, like uh, Nakasone in Japan. Uh, so, like, like Cardozo in Brazil, for instance, yeah. who may not be, you know, the most well-known in history books, yeah. but which I believe are people who have this formidable combination of a vision, yeah. a capacity to learn and learn and learn and work yeah. hard to get the facts right, yeah. and a sort of charism that allowed them to drive people forward. Yeah. I'm glad that you, in your list of leaders you included people from all over the world, from Europe, America, Asia, Latin America. So in that sense, it shows you how you can get talent uh, all over the world uh, today. So what's your final words of advice uh, for any young person today who's committed to trying to do something to create a better world and who looks to someone like you and say, okay, you fought these great battles. Tell me what advice I should have before I fight my great battles. No, I think, uh, I mean, in my, my, in my own experience, you know, the, the fundamental driver is you need to really want to make this world a better place. Very good point. Uh, if that's something which drives you, you absolutely, yeah. if that's something which drives you, you'll have a difficult life from time to time. You'll bump into difficulties. You'll find that people don't understand what you mean. You'll find that interest group will be uh, on the way of what you try to do. But if you have this sense, uh, I, think, uh, I think you can, you can, and each of us can bring a little bit of that, uh, of that progress. Uh, I, I, I think it's perfectly doable. Thank you. I'm glad you're ending on an uh, optimistic note. And on behalf of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, I want to thank you very much My pleasure. for coming My to pleasure. our school pleasure. and for giving this interview, which I'm sure will attract even more students to come and study <laughs> at our school. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> thank you.